Hi, this is Erin, and welcome to Everything EFL, my little podcast about English language teaching and other teachy stuff too. Credit and honourable mentions will be given during the episode or in the show notes. Let's crack on. Hello, you gorgeous teacher. If you are new to this podcast, you are most welcome. If you're one of my lovely regular listeners, welcome back. I'm delighted to see you either way. Right, today, what have we got? We've got the first of a very tenuously linked two-parter, projects and presentations. I thought um, I'd divide them up rather than sticking them in together because they are kind of separate entities, but one generally or sometimes or invariably or most of the time or quite often, follows on from the other. However, I think there's a lot more to them than you might think. So if you are going to do a project with your class, you know, great news. It's it's a good chance to produce loads of language. It's a good way for students to collaborate and, and achieve something. What could possibly go wrong? Well, you know, if you've ever tried doing a project and it's fallen a bit flat or it's not the roaring success you thought it would be in terms of collaboration and production, you're not the only one. But what went wrong? Well, in a word, I would say structure. Without structure, things can fall apart pretty quickly. So what I've done here is I've divided the project process into three stages for you. And I'm just going to use an example that I've done once or twice And that is uh, Design Your Dream Home. And this is based on New English File Intermediate. One of their units is on homes and houses. So that's the example I'm going to be using throughout. Okay, stage one, pre-project tasks for you. So first of all, think about what language and phrases do you want your students to produce? What do they need to collaborate together? So way before your project starts, This is a great chance to go lexical and look at phrases of suggestion, agreement, delegation, speaking up, inviting other students to speak, asking for opinions. So like I said, start way before and you can introduce a few phrases into every lesson. You can practice these phrases in different contexts. But, you know, it might be nice to just let them know, you know, this is why why we're practicing it and we're going to be using it. Uh, for this particular purpose in a week or so. Try not to overload them with too many phrases, just a few common ones, okay? I mean, if you look online, you can get 10 phrases for suggesting, 10 phrases for asking for opinion. I don't think it's very necessary and we generally tend to use the same couple anyway, don't we? Even if your level of your students is high, I think it's useful to do this in whatever way you see fit before you start your project. Shyer students will appreciate this support of phrases and it's especially useful if your class has mixed abilities. Okay, you are going to need some kind of document with all the instructions on it and all of the tasks you expect the students to do. So be specific. For example, design your dream home. Okay, what are the bullet points underneath that? Location, size, uh, outside the house, describe the rooms, draw a picture refer back to this document um, at various stages of the project as well and at the end it can function as a checklist so you know some students will kind of rush through to the end and then you can say to them um have you checked the document like have you done everything and then they check it and they, oh no no I haven't done this so or not you know but um, it's always good to have it as a checklist so you've got your document with your instructions ready now it's time for step two deliver your instructions I think also on this document, or maybe you can just discuss it with the students, is I think you need to have some time limits for each part. You've got your brainstorming, your creating, um, and then are you going to do some kind of presentation at the end of the end product? Or is it just going to be, do you want them to like draw a poster? Um, So again, you know, decide yourself what you want to do there, but make it very clear what you expect the end product or end result to be. Now, I would give students a few minutes just alone, just to think of a few things and make a couple of notes. Then I would put them in groups. Now, your choice of how to do this, you know your students best. Um, But I think the important thing is that students need to establish roles for each member of their group. Or maybe you need to establish roles for each member of the group. So get them chatting together. Who's creative? Who's artistic? Who would make a good project manager? Yeah, I said it. 
project manager. Can you get a strong person to lead the group? Okay, um, you could get them to refer back to the phrases that you would like them to use. You could get them to make sure everybody has an equal opportunity to speak. You could get them to just yeah, generally manage the project, make sure everything's running smoothly. Now, a strong speaker doesn't always mean a good leader. So what do you need to tell these potential leaders? You need to basically tell them everything I just said about what you expect them to do. Um, and then it's up to you to you know, keep monitoring the leaders as well and encouraging them because some people are naturally really good at it and they'll take instruction really easily. Some of them won't. You have to be there in case they need help as well. Now, step three, the project itself. So, like I said, give the students time to brainstorm their initial concept. You can monitor and fill the gaps in their knowledge or the vocabulary they need. This is the time to use all of that language that you've taught them. And it's a great time for you to use language of encouragement, of praise, to make sure the leader is leading, like I said. And when I say monitor, I mean monitor. I don't mean stick them in groups and then use that time to plan your next lesson. OK, they're going to need support. OK, so invariably a couple of things happen um, if there is some kind of drawing involved what I find is that at that stage, one person is drawing and all the other students are just sort of staring at them, sitting in silence. So what can you get them to do? How can you keep them busy? Are you wrapping up the project with a presentation? Can the other students who are not drawing start looking at that? Can they look at the checklist that you've given them already? Have they got everything done there? If there's really nothing else they can do in terms of the project, I don't know, give them some some questions to discuss. Would you rather this or this or what would you do if this happened? Just just keep them busy somehow. And then I suppose the last thing is they're going to present their their concept or whatever it is they've done to the class. Now, with my uh, design your dream home thing, it was fairly informal. They just held up the poster and I got them to practice, you know, who's going to say what, who's going to talk about this. And they just took it in turns just describing aspects of their concept and they took the other students through their ideas. So that was fine. If you're looking for them to do something a little bit more detailed and formal, well, watch this space. In a couple of weeks, I'll be back and I'm going to talk about how to really get into doing presentations and getting students into really good presentation habits. And I'm really looking forward to that because um, I really enjoy doing presentations with my students and I do it in quite a, there's a bit of a process to it. You know, it's very thorough. So I'll stop here. And I'll just ask you, what do you think? How do you prepare your students for projects? Feel free to pick and choose or adapt anything from this episode. These are not hard and fast rules, but they're just what I've learned throughout my years of teaching and what works for a generally sort of intermediate young adult class. But look, you know your students best. You know how they'll respond. So I'm going to leave you there for this week. Thank you for listening. I appreciate every single person who makes the effort to listen. Please follow me on social media if you don't already. All of the details are in the show notes. I post regular video content and in my private Facebook group, I post a few more questions for you guys to engage and discuss as well. Everything's growing. I'm really excited. And um, yeah, I can't wait to come back in a couple of weeks with another episode for you. And it will be the final episode of the year because I'm going to have a big, long break. Have a lovely week, guys. Be safe. Look after yourselves and share the love. Bye. <laughs>